Today's video is sponsored by Morning Brew. Oh, <laughs> yo, yo, John, we gotta play Valorant. Yeah, yeah, in a minute, in a minute. No, I don't think you understand. We're playing now. Valorant! I need to save! Literally in the office, we have all kinds of monitor setups and to our surprise, there truly isn't a single winner right here. You see, for us, the amount of monitors within a setup directly correlates to the type of work you are trying to accomplish, whether you are an accountant, an engineer, a developer, a gamer, or even a video editor, monitor setups serve a particular purpose and it's really important to understand that, you know, so we can get the most out of our investment. So today we are going to take a look at all of our four monitor setups to clear all doubts, but truly, the most important question here is, should you buy an ultra wide or a dual monitor setup? Let me know in the comments section down below what your current setup is and why you chose it. Of course, when it comes to money, it's important to realize that you are getting fewer pixels per dollar with an ultra wide. You see, for about $500 Canadian, you can either get a single 34 inch ultra wide monitor or rock dual 27 inch monitors, both with the same specs but of course very different pixel count, starting at 2560 by 1080 for the ultra wide and 1920 by 1080 for the dual monitors. In terms of pixels per dollar, you can get almost twice the resolution for the same amount of money. Dual 27 inch monitors equal to almost having a 49 inch ultra wide monitor when it comes to comparing its physical display size. The only thing is that with dual monitors you suffer from dealing with the thick bezel in the middle. Of course as your budget goes up, pixels go up. In our case we decided to go with the cream of the crop for an ultimate comparison. This is why we went with dual Razer Raptor displays at 27 inches delivering a total pixel count of 2560 by 1440p and a 38 inch LG ultra wide curved monitor display delivering a total pixel count of 3840 by 1600 pixels. Both monitor setups set at price ranges of $1800 Canadian. Again, if you do the math, you definitely get more of your dollars worth when it comes to pixels with dual displays, but the reality doesn't always reflect in terms of dollars. Windows Snap feature and macOS split views really help out when multitasking on a single ultra wide monitor, eliminating that middle bezel between apps in contrast to dual displays, but in my opinion, with a larger ultra wide size of 38 inches instead of 34 inches, you do get more comfort, almost making it seem like you are rocking dual 21 inch displays. 34 inch ultra wide monitors can get a bit cramped for productivity, but they still do the job beautifully. With this, expect a slight discomfort in terms of space for only a few weeks if you are coming from dual 27 inch displays. Regardless, unless you're using a 49 inch display, you'll truly never get that much screen real estate when comparing dual 27 inch monitors. So if your priority is taking advantage of all those pixels, ultra wide might not be it. But here's the thing, when it comes to dealing with full screen apps, ultra wides are unbeatable. If there are instances where I am dealing with a full excel spreadsheet that spans multiple columns, a massive editing software timeline like on Premiere Pro, or even just wanting to experience that immersive gaming experience, the ultra wide does deliver and it does it way better than dual monitors even when keeping up to date with the latest trends and the daily news, although I tend to do it on my phone thanks to Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a company that makes the best daily newsletter that keeps me up to date with all of the tech news that I used to miss out on. I used to get to the office in the morning and aimlessly browse social media until 9.30, but ever since I was introduced to Morning Brew, I spend my mornings getting up to speed on business, finance, and tech in just a few minutes. They make it super informative, witty and relevant, plus with it I recently learned that a boat containing 1100 Porsches caught on fire, at least the crew members seemed to be okay. Honestly, Morning Brew daily newsletter makes it super easy to keep up with today's current events. Morning Brew is completely free, it takes 15 seconds to subscribe and there's no reason not to give it a try if you are interested in business, finance or tech. Click the link in the description to subscribe to Morning Brew and start your productive day. Regardless, the sweet spot with these monitors truly lies here, simply because I am aware that accountants, engineers, and most careers out there including software development, we don't always need software tools to span a whole entire screen. 
This is why the beauty with ultra wide truly reflects here since we also have the choice to make things smaller and go back to multitasking. So if you are coding and watching a tutorial with maybe a terminal window open or even video editing a project with a script on the side, it can all be done comfortably. Plus, the gaming experience is exceptional. I do happen to play Forza Horizon on this monitor and it puts a smile on my face. You truly feel like you are immersed into the game and it makes me feel like I pretty much am in the car. With this particular ultra wide, I do get free sync, which is awesome. So if I am playing something a bit more fast paced like Cyberpunk, I truly never get screen tearing or stutters on the screen as long as I am connected through the display port, of course. Depending on your ultra wide monitor, some do come with their own optional application that will allow you to virtually divide your windows into custom areas. However, ultra wide monitors are far from perfect. One major flaw has to do with screencasting. If you are webcasting with your clients or co-workers, it's super hard to share your monitor without them seeing everything on your display. This is a major advantage to second display as on a dual monitor setup. Of course, you can always just designate the specific app, but sometimes you do need to present multiple apps for a project. Not only that, but if you are a streamer, ultra-wide monitors are a massive no-go. First of all, when it comes to streaming, you always want to have a standard aspect ratio when being subjected to streaming softwares. Not only that, but on a second separate monitor, it makes it easier to control your stream with something like OBS and even view your chat while you are streaming, mainly because on your main monitor, you want to be playing at full screen resolutions. And don't worry, most game settings make it super easy to travel with the cursor from the game to windows on a separate screen. As for content consumption, it's a bit annoying not being able to maximize a YouTube video on an ultra-wide screen while still multitasking, which is exactly the beauty of dual monitors and makes tutorial-based projects easier. As for gaming, of course, ultra-wides are awesome, but sometimes if you play FPS games like CSGO or competitive Call of Duty, they are just not ideal, which is why my dual monitor setup is heavily composed of a main screen completely facing me and a side portrait screen in case I want to stream. I just truly enjoy sniping and I try to get better at it every time I play. Although personally for coding, I think they are both just as equal. They do have their own pros and cons, but having a portrait monitor on the side is always awesome when working with a lot of code. I enjoy the benefit of being able to full screen my coding tutorials or preview my work on the main screen, but an ultra wide screen is also able to do the job and it's what I mostly rather use because I don't necessarily need all those pixels. And it's a huge plus since level entry M1 MacBooks can only rock a single display, which realistically is my number one computer choice when it comes to development. Physically, the advantages of each monitor setup are numerous, although it all depends on the budget and what you truly want out of them. With dual monitors, you have the possibility of adding more and more. Not only that, but you can also opt for 4K monitors if that's something you need. The cool thing with ultra wide is that with one cable, you can do it all, provided you choose the right monitor that comes with the right ports. One USB-C cable can act as a USB hub as well as deliver more screen real estate. But this is something that laptops tend to benefit from mainly when talking MacBooks. Dual monitors can also do the same with the MacBook, but you'll need more USB-C cables plugged in. Just know that budget monitors don't allow this, so you need to think about your setup strategy. Also, less monitors tend to take less space, so if you do opt for a single ultra-wide, it can be aesthetically pleasing, allowing you to not only make the setup look good, but also you have the ability to fit more things on the setup to help out with productivity and organization. Single monitors, on the other hand, oftentimes deliver higher frequency refresh rates and are great for gaming. Of course, those refresh rates don't only benefit gaming since it's also nice to have things flow smoothly within a screen. Also, on some ultra-wide monitors, you can connect two HDMI DisplayPort cables from your GPU to your display. With this, you can go to settings, turn on PBP, and now you can have two monitors on one screen, meaning that you can even watch YouTube on full screen on one half of the screen and do something else on the other half. It's not something I find myself doing, but it's there in case you need it, even if it means using the second half to pair your Windows workflow with a MacBook. 
Oh, and a cool advantage that both types of monitors tend to have is that they are now curved. It definitely feels a lot nicer having a curved panel, but do note that this is only advantages on ultra wide monitors, just because on dual displays you can use the arms to practically surround you. That being said, when it comes to the arms, it's a bit tricky. Please make sure that you get gas spring arms. I happen to be a massive fan of Vivo monitor arms as well as mounted. On your productivity setup, we have a couple of monitor arms that can truly handle the weight of these monitors. When rocking an ultra wide, you need to make sure that the gas spring arms can handle the weight so you can truly move it around as you wish. Even on top of this 32 inch monitor, this pole with a gas spring arm can easily handle it. On a dual monitor setup, the weight is a bit less of a concern, but the cable management is what takes over. My suggestion is to get arms that are able to route cables super well. For example, most of our arms have these compartments at the bottom where you can route all the excess cables, and most poles route cables super well, hiding all of your mess at all times. In the office, we do have four setups, where the last one is used for our friends who like working here. All of them serve a purpose depending on the task you want to accomplish, of course. My setup has a 38-inch ultra-wide monitor, and for my own needs, I find it perfect for the type of work I do. Whether it's coding, editing, or even gaming, it's just great. When I have calls with brands, it does get tricky, but I almost never have the need to share more than two windows at a time. Funny enough, I did stream with this monitor a while back, but that consisted of some scotch tape in order to know where my window limit was on my screen. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, I know. Regardless, I wanted to future-proof myself since I am thinking of getting a maxed out MacBook Pro for editing work. It'll make things even cleaner and I'll have more room on the setup. The second setup is for editing purposes and that's why we are rocking a 4K 32 inch display for color grading so at the bottom we can line our timelines with the help of our 34 inch ultra wide screen which is more than enough. There is barely any other work that gets done here, it's mostly design and video editing work, meaning that this monitor setup truly serves one particular purpose for one particular individual. The third setup is for gaming and if you haven't checked out our minimal gaming setup video, check that out. Dual monitors for gaming are extremely key when you want to stream, play competitive and just avoid a few headaches here and there, but it could also be a coding setup since the portrait monitor delivers vertical space for code. The last setup always gets paired up with a laptop, and that's why for us we found that 32 inches was perfect in order to deliver enough room for people to work. All my friends tend to find this monitor huge and I did realize that they all use it as a second monitor by always using the MacBook as the main one. But really, single monitor setups like these are mostly great with laptops. Just make sure to get at least a 32 inch display panel. With this monitor, all you need is a USB-C cable and you're pretty much ready to go and consume 4K content. I personally think that there is no winner here. It all depends on your personality and the type of work you are trying to accomplish. It's all about outweighing the pros with the cons with the monitor setup you wish to go for. I hope this video can help you guys make a better decision and allow you all to work in a productive environment for your needs. Let me know in the comment section down below what your current setup is and why you chose it. I will see you all soon. Take care.